Step one, turn on your gas. You'll see the dials or the gauges uh, read that there is indeed pressure. Step two, get in here and flip your power switches. You'll see that light come on. Step three, turn on the light for your uh, microscope. Oh, thanks man. You'll see your lights come on right here. Make sure you they're oriented appropriately. This other light is uh, used to see um, fluorescent dyes, so you don't really need to worry about this guy. Um, it's a UV light, so it's actually probably best that you don't uh, mess with it too much unless you know you're going to be uh, looking at something that has been fluorescently tagged. You'll want to take this UV guard off very carefully since you're not using the UV light. Um, it causes things to be a little blurry if you don't take it off and you can put it right back in here in this uh, black case that we've got. Um, we generally leave this black case sitting right here uh, because it helps um, helps with the injections bringing your surface a little closer to the um, the lens if you're using the monitor you'll want to push this power button right there on the side you'll see that come up there's a button on top here you'll press on and you'll see that blue light come on and then that no signal uh, message will will disappear that was right here and then you will hit the switch right here okay. step four you'll want to get all the following supplies out of this cabinet you'll see here next to the microscopes you want to get your calibration slide in this little plastic uh, container you want your surgical uh, scissors I guess is what you could call them and then um, these super fine tipped um, I guess you could call those tweezers and once you get those out you, you need your your needles as well and you'll need these pipettes you'll want to be careful with these you don't want to really be wasteful with them because they're pretty expensive they have a very fine tip and so they, they're kind of pricey, so just be careful. Try not to uh, use them wastefully, or anything for that matter. Um, and then you'll get the pipette that reads um, from uh, 0.5 to 10 microliters out. You don't need the other one because it, uh, well actually, let's see here. Yeah, you'll want this pipette. Um, because it has the tip small enough to um, be inserted into the end of these pipette tips. The other one is too big. So you'll just stick it in just like that. So, sorry. So the next step, you'll want to get your calibration slide. I apologize, it's broken, but it's not going to affect the... Uh, uh, functionality of the slide so you'll uh, grab your slide and just um, you want to orient it so that the the letters on there make sense I don't know if you can see them but they read uh, yeah you can see them but they're just blurry but so they just read like 1.5 millimeters 0.6 millimeters you'll just place that down so that it actually makes sense um, reading left to right so you don't want it to put it this way you want to put it this way um, you don't want to put it this way. You want to put it this way. Um, it's it was a lot harder when the slide wasn't broken to tell how to orient it, but now that it is, just know that you put the jagged corner right there in the bottom right. And you just put it on. I like to use a Kim wipe uh, just to give you a little contrast, um, so that when you're looking through the microscope, you can uh, see the. 
um, markings of your micrometer on there a little better. So you can see it on the uh, monitor here. It's a little uh, out of focus. So this knob right here, this fat knob is your focus. So as you can see, when I twist it, some things come into focus and out of focus. You want the micrometer in focus. And then uh, this is your zoom, these smaller knobs towards the front. So you can see, I can pull it way out or zoom way in. I like to have it closer. Um, and then just adjust your mic uh, micrometer uh, appropriately and you're uh, almost ready to start calibrations. Your next step, just grab this pipette that's sitting over here by the Kim Wipes. It has mineral oil in it, and that's the sole purpose of this pipette. Um, you don't really need to have like crazy high quality, super clean mineral oil for what we're about to do next. You just need to have a little tiny drop of mineral oil to use to calibrate your needle. Um, and so, you just place a drop of mineral oil, I know it's probably really hard to see, right over that circle that is around the, um, the micrometer there. And all you need is a drop, you take your pipette, just put it back. Don't need to do anything else with it. Um, don't use it for water or any, anything but the mineral oil. If by chance, there's a lot of mineral oil in there. If you need more mineral oil, we have a bottle of it right here, but it's super messy and it's just kind of a hassle. So if you can avoid uh, messing around too much with that, that's always good. Um, just be sure to clean up after yourself when you're done. Okay, that's about what it should look like right there. And this part's kind of challenging. You got to get the super fine tip of your pipette into the needle tip or the end of your needle. That was pretty lucky. I got it first try. It might take you a little while to get it. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, but once you get it, you're good to go. So you put the, the tip of your um, pipette all the way to the bottom of the needle until it stops moving and then you'll push down on your plunger until you see liquid come out um, into the tip of your, your needle. Okay, so we're seeing liquid come out. It's a little dark. And I want to put it in the light a bit better. Okay. Now we can see it. Okay, there we go. So as you uh, push down on the plunger, you will slowly pull out of the needle with your pipette tip and this should help you avoid air bubbles in your needle. If you do get air bubbles you can always try again. You don't need your needle to be completely full. Um, as you can see here my needle is not completely full um, uh, but that'll do. All right. Uh, your next step is you're going to be to insert your needle into the uh, micro adjustment mechanism. So you just have the end of your needle there and you just slide it right on up in. Um, I don't think, you don't want to just shove the whole thing up in there, but that, that length is probably just fine where you have about an inch and a half, two inches of your needle still protruding. So. Um, when these needles are pulled, most of the time they don't have a, a hole in uh, the very end of the needle. So you have to manually trim a hole, um, or I guess trim the needle tip until a hole uh, becomes available or apparent. Um, and you have to do it uh, very slowly, and very carefully, because it's really easy to trim too far and then the hole in the end of the needle is too big it's better to not trim far enough and then to adjust it again than to trim too far and have to get a whole new needle for adjusting your needle um, 
to the correct position this knob right here brings your needle down closer to your slide and back out so you can kind of see that there it's really really fine this is just the same thing but on a much smaller scale so that uh, you can have a little greater control um, this knob brings your needle kind of in a Y direction if you're looking down on your um, calibration slide it causes the needle to go up and down this way whereas this knob causes it to go back and forth like that uh, and the same thing with that top knob this fat knob down here um, almost it's kind of hard to explain you'll have to get in here and mess with it but it's almost like an angle adjustment it helps you to orient your needle at the appropriate angle it looks like uh, it's doing the same thing as this top knob but it's it's not um, so just uh, mess around with it and try to work uh, practice and you'll get the hang of it but we will uh, um, get our needle down on um, towards the, the micrometer so that we can um, so that we can see it and then we'll see if we need to adjust the length of our needle at all so what you'll want to do you can kind of see some spots where we've already um, let some of the liquid out you'll hit this start button right here on the uh, pneumatic pico pump to inject the volume that you're looking for we're trying to do one nanoliter one nanoliter is in between these two big tick marks so about the size of the end of my finger there um, you can see that these look really big but what we want is for the droplet of whatever you're injecting to hang from the end of your needle but not touch the bottom of the slide so that it's still three-dimensional and that's how you are able to use a micrometer to inject or to measure a volume so approximately that much of your um, whatever you're injecting as it's hanging from your needle tip is one nanoliter Farther. There we go. That'll help. All right. That's uh, about what it should look like. You can see as I um, bumped the machine or the micro adjustment mechanism that the droplet wiggled a little bit on the end of our needle, and before it touched the bottom of the slide, it was the appropriate volume. Use a Tim wipe to clean off your calibration slide and then put it away. So your next step, if you're doing zebrafish embryos, you'll grab a slide there in the cabinet in this container, stick it in a petri dish, which are also in the cabinet. Uh, just lie it flat down in the petri dish, and you're gonna line up your eggs all along the edge of your slide so that um, you have something to brace against as you're trying to get in there with a needle so that the eggs aren't slipping around everywhere. The slide helps to keep it stationary. So you'll just pipette some out. Um, we've got a lot of debris in there as well, so you don't, yeah, it's okay if you get a little debris, just make sure you separate it out when you're done. And so we'll pipette some of these eggs out and stick them on that uh, Petri dish. Pipetting them straight out onto that edge, like Tyler's doing, works phenomenally well. Um, if you have kind of a, a little dab of liquid there, you can use a paper towel to um, kind of suction that off. Just make sure 
you know, suck up any eggs when you do it. And then if you have any other uh, stray eggs just lying around a little farther away from the edge of the slide, I like to use the back end of one of these. Um, yep, yep. The back end of one of these uh, uh, sets of tweezers and you just kind of uh, just gently push them into place with the back end of that guy. If you use the other end, you'll skewer the egg and it'll die. So just use the back end and carefully push it into place. Um, you can use your finger if you have gloves on, but that I've found it's really easy to smash them, so this is just kind of what I find the easiest. And once you're done uh, lining them up along the edge of the slide, you stick them underneath the microscope, orient the slides to where you can see it in the the um, in the microscope and you may have turned this off so flip that back do you have one eyepiece or two I have one cool so if you have one eyepiece that means your monitor is working um, because half of your so you can kind of see a little bit of movement on there from our fluorescent dye. Oh, there we go. Now we're seeing some eggs. And so Tyler, once he gets that oriented appropriately, he'll just use this uh, uh, micro adjustment mechanism to uh, get the needle into place. And he'll just go uh, all the way down the edge of the slide and inject every single one of those. We have the appropriate volume already set. I'll just um, put it in the egg. You'll see a deflection when the tip of the needle touches the egg, and then you'll see that deflection kind of pop back or disappear as the needle tip penetrates the egg. You can kind of see the needle tip there. Um, and then once you see that, you're good to go into the embryo. If you're using something to modify the genome, you want it in the embryo. Um, or sorry, into the uh, nucleus there. And then you hit the start button on the machine and it'll inject.